Hey, what's up guys and gals? It's me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose, back with another edition of Air Holler 2 and a little FSX. So this is part two of our missions video where, you know, we set up an aircraft uh, engines factory and we're fulfilling missions to manufacture the aircraft engines and sell those off. I've already fulfilled the contract uh, here in Houston, uh, which netted us a pretty good amount of money and allowed us to go ahead and buy the rest of the materials that we needed to finish out the uh, Gulf Shores contract of 677 engines. You'll see I'm sitting at $306,323 right now, and we're about to take a flight that's worth mm, close to $2 million. Uh, and make us a little bit of money. So I'm pretty excited about getting that done. We'll have a, a nice little nest egg and a nice cushion moving forward uh, in the game. Now, I've loaded up my plane with the aircraft engines, which is 677 pounds, put a little fuel on the plane, and I still have a little bit of room left over, but I looked at the commodities and jobs, and there's just really nothing that I can take over to Gulf Shores. The prices on commodities between the two bases are exactly the same, so there's no money to be made on commodities. And as far as jobs, the only job in between the two bases was an outbound job from Gulf Shores, which I had um, Sky Pigeon load up in the Comanche. He's flying that right now. And there's nothing else really that is in route other than this load of glass that goes up here. Um, and I, and honestly, I really just want to go ahead and get this job done because I've only got about nine hours left uh, to complete it. If we look at the mission that we're actually trying to work on, uh, you'll see the aircraft engine, nine hours and 12 minutes to get it done. So uh, weather can move in later on today. So I'm going to go ahead and get this flight taken care of. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So if we look at the fleet, you look at my chieftain and we'll check it out. I've already got the cargo on board. Uh, it's a 410 mile flight. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and boost up the amount of fuel I have up to about 550. And that'll give me 150 nautical miles in reserve. So let's pull, let's just put 130 gallons of fuel on the plane just to make it nice and even. That'll give us plenty. So 130, come on, yeah, close enough, 130.2. So we'll put that on there and we'll be ready to fly on over. Yes, I wanted to put that on there. All right, so at this point, I'm going to fly. Now, this is a little bit different from flying um, a job where I take a job and I go ahead and say fly it and it flies now. To fly to a base without having any kind of job or anything set up, I have to come down to the fly this aircraft by myself. I'm going to click that. It's going to ask me the destination when I want to fly, which is Kilo Juliet Kilo Alpha. I'll go ahead and use selected. It'll ask me about my load, which I've already done. Uh, then it'll bring up the flight planner, which I'm just going to go ahead and click because, as always, I'm going to set my flight plan up outside of air hauler. And uh, it'll tell me to go ahead and set everything up and get everything running. It should turn green in just a second because I already have flight sim running and the aircraft is loaded up on the runway. All right, good. All that's taken care of. I will see you guys in the airplane. I don't know what it is, but every time I load this plane into this particular airfield, it sounds like the wind's blowing 50 knots outside. Uh, when in reality, it's it's only about four knots out of the north. But anyways, uh, you can also hear a little thunder in the background. We do have a little weather along the coast and here in Houston, so uh, we will be looking to skirt around some of that. And I uh, fly to. I filed a flight plan uh, accordingly. But anyways, welcome to Houston and David Hooks Memorial Airfield. And um, this is our base of operations here in Houston. And this is our Piper Navajo Chieftain. A uh, great little plane, a lot of fun to fly. My buddy Brave Dave turned me on to it. Uh, this is a plane that he actually has flown in his life. He actually owned one of these. Uh, that he used to shuttle uh, workers and materials around with. and. Uh, uh, talked very highly of it, turned me on to it, and um, told me that uh, a lot of companies use these for cargo. And um, in fact, I've talked to a gentleman out of Ireland in chat about procedures and things, and uh, he was telling me that this is the plane he flies daily. Uh, it's stripped out. He's got a lot of cargo netting and everything on the inside of it, and uh, he uses it daily to fly uh, air cargo runs out of Ireland. So. Um, 
very cool when you can touch base with some people who actually own the planes and give you a little bit of history about them and the procedures for flying the planes as well so uh, just some camera views of the outside of the plane let you see how it looks uh, I picked this one up off of Coronado's website uh, it is modeled by Alabio, uh, and it is um, available at several, uh, you know, distributions, but it is distributed by Coronado. Uh, you can find it on a lot of different websites uh, for aviation stuff. Uh, any of your sim stores will probably have it. But anyways, it's a great little model. You can see it is a twin. It cruises about 150 knots, uh, you know, when you set it up for cruising speed. And... Um, yeah it's nice it has nice high surface ceiling and it has oxygen so uh, you can get on up over the storms if you have to so uh, we're gonna be setting out today we're gonna skirt the storms and not actually fly through them but uh, you know there is some weather in the area as I told you well we'll go ahead and model the inside of it for you or let you see the model on the inside lots and lots of detail to it now this is an older plane um, it's a you know workhorse plane. It's been out there and been beaten and abused and you can see that in the modeling uh, The carpets wore out the seats have got some pits and scratches on it I like that. I like the fact that they didn't model it just pristine now That's not to say I wouldn't have loved to have seen it modeled like a couple of different versions like a pristine version uh, a more war version and then even a cargo version with none of the seats in it, but um that's a good looking model. Look at her. All right. So, all right. So, enough of that. Weather's moving in. You can see the modeling, though, on it again for it to be worn. It's got a little bit of the wear and tear on the yoke and stuff like that. So, um, but, anyways, let's get our plane set up so we can get in the air before these storms just overtake us. Uh, we do have to set up fuel and payload. So, we're going to jump in here. Fuel transfers over pretty much. Uh, from H2 uh, So I don't really ever have an issue with it But I do like to come in here and just verify the weight distribution on it to make sure everything's right uh, We've got 56 gallons in the inside tanks and then these do have uh, dual bladders on them So you've got an inside bladder and outside bladder uh, So we've got nine nine uh, gallons on the outside tips. We'll be using those uh, once we get up at cruising uh, So we'll take off on the inside tanks cruise on the outside tanks and then when they are run out then we'll cruise back into the inside tanks um but anyways 130 gallons of fuel on board that'll get us uh, going really well uh payload wise we've got to set this up now we have 677 pounds of payload i am going to add a pilot onto the plane because i i feel like you have to have a pilot right um the game does not factor in a pilot and I caught a little flack for this uh, you know recently a uh, gentleman jumped on and said oh you're making a mistake every time you add that pilot's weight in there that's too much weight you're putting on the plane what are we flying a drone uh, come on it's it's got to have a pilot in it and you've got to account for that pilot's weight so I go ahead and put the pilot in and I put his weight on the plane then I put the cargo in and um, and I love you know divide the cargo up to balance the plane out otherwise you're just cheating to me I mean if you don't put the pilot in there you're just cheating the system yes A2H or AH2 I got to get all my numbers right uh, air hauler 2 does not incorporate the pilot into the game at all his weights are not figured into anything so uh, when they put your plane in there with its uh, you know um, weights and your maximum takeoff weight they don't factor in a pilot because they don't know what your pilot what kind of weight you're going to put your pilot in is your weight is your pilot a big beefy guy or gal or skin and bones or whatever you you don't know pilot size is very and i i think they leave that to you i'm going to maybe say that the you know the developer of the game um, you know leaves you that to do yourself let you do the pilot and handle the pilot Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it completely throws off the game by putting a 190 pound pilot in the pilot seat. But you know what? The only person that's going to hurt is me uh, because that all that's going to do is, if anything, it's going to decrease the likelihood of me greasing the landing because maybe I come down with more weight on the plane than the, the game thought I should. I don't know. But... I just feel like I ought to put a pilot in it. So I'm going to put a pilot in. And if you don't like the fact that the uh, I put the pilot in, 
that's fine that's your own decision you do it however you want to do it i'll do it however i want to do it so um but don't tell me i'm making a mistake when i've actually thought through it considerably um and i you know it's only a mistake when you do it and you don't think about it if you actually sit down and you think about it and go oh the game doesn't calculate for a pilot so instead of me, you know, I need to make sure that when I pick my loads up, I need to make sure that I factor in the pilot's weight. Then it's not a mistake. It's actually a, a thoughtful decision. So anyways, with all that said, I'm going to put 190 pounds in the co-pilot seat just to balance out the weight a little bit. And then in the first row, I'm going to go ahead and throw in, um, what's that leave me with? About... 400 487 so with 487 left we'll put 243 the 243 in the first row passenger and we'll put 244 on the other side and that should give us 867 that is the pilot's weight plus the 677 for those who question my math and we are good to go so with that done, we have a nice center of balance on the plane, so we're good there. We are well under our gross weight. Uh, gross weight is uh, 5,966 pounds, and our maximum takeoff weight is 7,044, 45. So as you can see, with this plane, with a decent amount of fuel, uh, you can carry quite a bit of weight on it. It's, uh, it's a good plane for doing cargo. Uh, I like it. All right, so with that said, we'll go ahead and get started with our setup. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the yoke here, and that way you guys can see what I'm doing. I wanna verify that my parking brake is set, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, set that one time just to make sure it's good. Then I'm gonna go back here to the center console, and I'm gonna select my fuel tanks, and we're going for the inner fuel tanks on this. So we want to select inside fuel tanks. If we were going for tips, we'd be out here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and turn the battery and the alternator on. And I'm going to open the cow flaps up on the motors. And that's going to let them breathe while we're down here on the ground. Next is just uh, test the lights up here real quick. Film. They are good. Hey, that done. I'll move up here i'm going to turn my positioning beacon on that way as we start to rotate the engines over uh, people what's going on and that's what we're going to do next we're going to go ahead and start with our right engine i'm going to bring the fuel mixture up and i'm going to bring the uh, throttle all the way up uh, then i'm going to introduce fuel and make sure that I have fuel pressure and i'm watching this fuel gauge here to make sure that we get fuel pressure when we turn on the fuel pump um, on this particular model, there's no gradual build up to it. It just automatically snaps right on up. So we do have fuel pressure. So I can go ahead and bring that throttle back down. Uh, and you'll notice when I do that too, the lights up on the top, when it's open and you have fuel flow, the light comes on. When you start to bring it down and you get low fuel flow, that light does come on. Uh, and that's natural in this particular plane. I'll go ahead and turn the fuel pump off. Then I'm gonna come right back down here it's like bob up and down bob up and down um, about 20 percent on the throttle is what i'm going to crack that open uh, just to go ahead and get it started up here i just thought about something so i adjusted my throttles real quick uh 20 on that then i'll come up here turn my magnetos on i'm gonna open the side window up real quick so that i could yell out of the airplane I'm not gonna yell, I'm just not gonna be that silly. But uh, positioning beacon is on, magnetos are on, and we would yell, we would look around, make sure there's no numbskull walking around the plane here to get hurt on, and we yell clear prop, and then hold down the starter until we had ignition, plane's coming up. Go over there, get rid of that. I'm gonna jump over to the co-pilot seat and see that I have oil pressure building up. You see the difference between the left engine and the right. The left engine is at zero on oil pressure and this one's climbing up. And this one will start to build some uh, temperature in the oil. Uh, this one you can see is well below 100 degrees. This one is starting to get up and climb up. 
Uh, it's about 1100, starting to get up around 12 or 120, I would say. Um, so, anyways, that's just uh, what you're looking at there. So with that side started, we'll repeat the same process for the left side engine, open throttle and fuel mixture. Uh, go ahead and get that throttle or that fuel pressure checked. We have fuel flow. Cut that throttle down. Shut that off. Go ahead and crack that motor. That. Jack around. Everything looks good. Magnetos are on. Clear prop left, and we will rotate. Go. Both motors are up and running. Down good. Check to make sure that we have a little pressure coming up on that motor. We do. One's looking good. Temperature's coming up on this one. Temperature's starting to come up on this one. Good stuff. All right, so we can go ahead and close that window. And we can start firing up the avionics. Let them come to life. Now again, we have the Garmin G600. We're running a glass cockpit on this. Uh, if you've never run one or don't know much about them, it basically replaces all your old gauges, which I don't know. I sort of like the old gauges. Um, but on this, you've got your airspeed indicator over here on uh, the left. Altitude is on the right. Your uh, horizontal or your um, horizontal indicator over here. All your uh, nav bug and everything is here. Course heading, GPS, that cycles between the, the course and the GPS. And then uh, at the top, you've got your nav information as far as your GPS or your nav. It tells you GPS one, it tells me what the next waypoint is, the distance to it, all that directional for it is uh, three zero. But it gives you all that information up at the top. You've got your wind speed indicator here. We got a three knot, it looks like three knot wind right now. Um, and then I've got my outside air temperature is 15 degrees according to this. Air sp uh, vertical speed indicator is on this side. Uh, then over on this side of it, you get a whole bunch of, it's multi-purposed on this side. Uh, mainly your GPS is over here for you so you can see what you've got going on right there in front of you uh, you also have an overlay for um, alerts for aircraft in the area that will pop up uh, you can select weather on it you can go to the weather radar you can also if you want to get information about an airport that you're headed to you can dial in that information on it as well a lot of functionality is built into this it's pretty cool um, and then over on our radio stack what we're looking at with the radios We've got the GNS 530 here. That's going to control our radio one and our nav one, uh, as well as our GPS. And then our radio two and nav two are over here on the King stack. Uh, then you've transponder, and then the Avidyne is a really, really cool piece of uh, of equipment. It basically combines everything into one unit, sort of like the G the uh, the G600 does. Uh, it's got an overlay here. This particular overlay will show me traffic. I can then toggle the labels on and off of the traffic if I want to see uh, what there there are as far as what their tail numbers and everything are on it. Or I can have it no labels. I can have the weather on or off. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, you can change the base map, how you want that to look. Uh, it's really, really cool. Then, as you select through it, the different functionalities of it. This is topography. This is going to let you see height and elevation on the ground below you uh, and on the radar. So a lot of it shows up. Different elevations show up at different colors. Uh, it's great for flying through mountains and stuff. I have this on the DC of uh, the uh, PC-12, and when I do some stuff in the Rockies, um, I uh, I use this quite a bit. Um, so it shows you all that information for you. Uh, trip in, gives you your basically your your flight plan, and it gives you the headings that you're supposed to take, all the information for it. And then if you hit the airport information, it gives you the information as far as frequencies, ILS, and everything for the airport that you're headed into. Uh, the next thing on this one gives you nearest airport information. Uh, it gives you the frequencies for them. Um, you can drill into those airports as well and see a runway information for it. 
Um, and then the last thing on it is it has an active radar for weather radar. You can tilt it up or down however you want to do it. You can set the range on that. And um, pretty, pretty cool. I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave it on radar because, uh, yeah, we're going to need it today. But it is a gloomy day outside, and I just want to make sure I don't run into anything. All right, so with that all done, we are good. Good, good, good. The, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn my wing lights on, and we'll contact a airport, and we'll start getting some information here. We're going to go to ADIS first. So we get our airport information real quick. It doesn't really matter, but we go ahead and do it the way you would do it in real life. Go through, get your active runway, get your winds, all of that information. Alright, we have information whiskey at this point, uh, which is each uh, each designator they give is based upon the latest hours information for the airport. Usually it's updated every hour, so we have information package whiskey. So now we can contact uh, delivery clearance and we can go ahead and get okay, going. Clearance delivery, Hyper November 350 Tango November, IFR to Kilo Juliet, Kilo Alpha, ready to copy. Hyper November 350 Tango November, clear to Kilo Juliet, Kilo Alpha, airport has filed, fly runway heading, climb and maintain 11000, departure frequency is 119.7, squawk 7124. All right, so maintain 11000. Uh, runway heading, and we're going to put 7124 in the box. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I know I could do this automatically with it, but sometimes I just like to do it, you know? So, Did you hear my last transmission? Hyper November 35. All right, do the read back on that. While we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and set our altitude for 11,000. Departure on 119.7. All right, so doesn't dude know that I like him trying to talk and explain things and he's just pressuring me to be immediate. All right, so there's our altitude of 11,000 and when I want my vertical speed, uh, climb speed, I want to climb out at about a thousand feet per minute. So that'll be a nice gradual climb for us. We should be able to maintain airspeed doing that. All right, so that is set up. I should go ahead and turn my autopilot on because I'll probably lose all that information. Let's go ahead and arm the autopilot or just get it into standby. And it can run through its cycles and get all of that done. Figure that out. All right, so heading bug is set for runway heading because we're going out on 3-5 right. So let's go ahead and contact ground and request taxi IFR. Ground, Hyper November 350 Tango November with whiskey ready to taxi IFR. Hyper November 350 Tango November taxi two and hold short of runway 35 right via taxiway Echo Foxtrot Mike one contact tower on 118.4 when ready. All right, cool. Acknowledge our taxi clearance. Taxi two and hold short runway 35 right via taxiway Echo Foxtrot Mike one Hyper zero Tango November. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. We'll go ahead and give a little, little power to the engines here, and we'll go ahead and start rolling on out. The taxi and Echo Foxtrot Mic 1. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to kind of roll around here, and before I head out onto the taxiway, I'm going to do my run-up. Um, you know, in real life, when you contact the ground, they give you an area to go to to do your run-up. Or they would have a designated run-up box. 
I don't get that in the uh, in this particular game so uh, what I'll do is I'll just pull up right here and before we actually start out we'll go ahead and do our run up real quick and that way we can get it done before we get out there on the taxiway and we don't bog up any other traffic because I have a couple of times done it on the runway or on the taxiway and I've had some issues where planes come up right behind me while I'm doing it and uh, it's sort of annoying when that happens so we'll just pick an area right up here and we'll go ahead and get it done real quick before we get on the, the taxiway and that way we don't have to worry about it the run up not that important in this particular plane because the run up is not very accurate um, this doesn't it's not well simulated um, whereas like on the on the a2a stuff it's really really well done and really important that you get it right so because uh, that's the only way you're gonna know if you've got a file plug on this one it doesn't really pay that much attention so we're gonna go ahead and throttle up on the uh, first engine we'll get it up to about 1500 wait for the turbo to spool over hold up at about uh, somewhere around 2000 rpms right in that area I usually like to have it at 2000 I came a little bit over it uh, and then what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and cycle through my magnetos normally you'd look for that 50 drop but you're not going to see it on this particular plane it just doesn't do a good job of modeling that uh, and then you want to come down here and feather your prop three times or cycle your prop three times so you get about a 500 drop on that or 250 drop I guess and then on the third one you're gonna just hold it down and let it feather making sure that the prop is feathering and that one is good so we'll bring that one down bring this one up and again bring it up to about 1500 wait for a second for that turbo to kick over there we go bring in that'll bring it up pretty much about to the well you know 2000 rpm mark and then with that done come on up here check your magnetos again we're not going to find a miss because well it's not set up for this particular model but cycle the prop three times just get that oil flowing up through there let it regain itself and then the last time hold and check for feathering and it's doing it that's good all right so that's cool and we've done our run up and now we can go ahead and get back on our way all right so way out this gate now the taxiway on this particular airport is right between two runways um, so you do have to check make sure as you cross over three five right that nobody's coming now this little lake right here is actually a uh, landing for a float plane so if we were um, if we had a float plane we could actually land on that um, but we don't have a float plane so we're not landing on it But that's one of the reasons why I actually picked this uh, airport is not just because of the materials I could get at this particular airport to build the originally build the pilot watches but I picked this airport too because it had water runways so if I ever did decide to get a float plane and do float plane landings um, I would have an airport or a base of operations that actually utilized float planes didn't really have one uh, at my base which is home base which is sort of, sort of interesting seeing as we're surrounded by water but yeah there's no float plane base there I can't even think of a float plane base where I live 
Now, there are people with float planes, but they usually just land them and taxi them over to their homes. So, I can't think of a place where there would actually be a, a designated float plane base here. Not that I've ever seen an organized one here, but let's put it that way. All right, so we'll make our way down to the end of the runway and uh, we'll go ahead and get set up for takeoff. Heading back to make a whole lot of money. Which is always nice, right? Always nice when you make a whole lot of money. But yeah, this is a multi-million dollar flight we're hauling. Selling off these aircraft engines. I won't be hurting for cash afterwards, let's put it that way. Alright. Pick up a couple of new planes. Who knows? As long as we don't crash on this flight. Knock on wood. All right. Now I've adjusted the volume a little bit on this plane. Um, so I hope the engines aren't too loud, but it is quite noisy. Um, so I will point that out. If I get a little muffled by the engine noise, I do apologize. All right. We'll pull up here, hold short of the runway, and then we'll go ahead and contact the tower uh, for our permission to take off. Contact tower. Hook, Let's tower, take off. Paper, November 35, Zero Tango, November, ready for IFR departure, runway 35, right. Piper, November 35, Zero Tango, November, cleared for takeoff, runway 35, right. All right, we are cleared for takeoff. We'll go ahead and switch off our taxi lights, turn our landing lights. Yeah, oh, I didn't turn taxi lights on in the beginning. Ah! Someone will surely point that out to me. All right, let's roll. Piper zero tango Close that. Acknowledge last transmission. Yeah, I got you, buddy. Piper I was hitting the button as you said that. Five. Right, Piper November three five zero tango November. All right, let's close that box out. This is a very narrow one way, so moved up onto it real quick. Lined up. There we go. Good. All right. So just a final check of everything real quick. Make sure we are good to go. Our flaps are set. Our trim is set. Our lights are on. We are good to go. Heading bug is set for the runway heading. So let's and snap that uh, we've got our altitude preset for autopilot that's good autopilot is flight director is on we are good to go so uh, at this point we'll just bring up the engines spool them up to 1500 and we're gonna fly this to the firewall on takeoff but I want to get the 1500 let the turbo kick in and then we'll go ahead and max power, come off the brakes, and let's get her airborne. Alright, at 80 we want to just give a little back pressure, rotate around 90. Gear up, and once we're over 100 we'll go ahead and retract the flaps. start our climb and we're up that easy easy peasy all right check our climb a little bit faster than I want Piper zero tango November contact Houston departure on one one nine or point seven pull that engine back a little bit I want to go 40 inches on the engine and I want to bring my RPM, go 
ahead and acknowledge that. RPM's back to about 2400 on this. That's good. Alright. And that should get us climbing at about a thousand feet. And I'll go ahead and turn the autopilot on. We're heading and vertical speed. Creeper, November 350, Tango, November, Houston, departure, Roger, altimeter 3002. Creeper, zero, Tango, November, turn right, heading 035, resume on navigation, climb and maintain 11000. All right, so going to 035. Proceed on course, climb and maintain 11000. Creeper, zero, Tango, November. So we'll bring that around to 035. And it, this gets where I'm having some issues with this. Getting it to 035 is... It's, it, it doesn't give me that, that nice, smooth dial of going incremental up. It just kind of pops around. So 036 is about as refined as I can get it. I can mess around with it and get it to 035, but it's, it's sort of a pain to try to do. So we're climbing to 1100 or 1000 and our indicated vertical speed is going to be at a thousand feet per minute uh, which should allow us to main plane, uh, maintain good airspeed. So at this point we're pretty much set up. I just have to remember at this point to, um, to watch everything. Remember at 10,000 feet to go ahead and turn off my landing lights. Um, yeah. Watch and maintain. So 035 resume on navigation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat that 035 a little bit. Maybe go to 036 so that I can actually get on my course heading and pop that over to the, uh, to the GPS. So let's go heading and bring that over see how that went one increment and then it jumped five it's crazy the way it does maybe somebody knows a way to fix that who's flown this particular uh, G600 like I say sometimes when I hit the button and I start it'll give me like singles but if I hesitate for one split second, it jumps back into the old 10 degree mode. Rather, rather frustrating. Watching my airspeed here, we're creeping up just ever so slowly. That's fine. Uh, and I'm trying to close in the gap here on this, uh, on our course here for our GPS. Once I get that tightened up, then I'll go ahead and switch the uh, autopilot over to nav. Right, we've got a little bit of a right crosswind, right quarter wind at about 13 knots. I do like that about the uh, having a glass cockpit, being able to see your wind right here, see that it's coming off the right quarter at about 13. Picking up a little bit of airspeed. That's cool. I can actually increase my vertical speed a little bit. Climb on this is about 1200, so you don't want to go over that. Or 
or let me say the optimal climb on this was, a, I think, 1200, 1300 right in there. But we bring it up to 1200 feet per minute, that'll American Pacific blow that climb. Turn right heading to 8 0, resume on navigation, climb and maintain 16,000. Turn right heading to 8 0, proceed on course, climb and maintain 16,000. American Pacific at 628. Alright, we just about closed in on that flight plan, indicated path. And as soon as we get centered up on there, and uh, I'll come back around on it. American Pacific 2628, contact Houston Center on 120.4. That looks good. All right, so jump back American here Pacific and flip to nav. And the autopilot will get us on the GPS. And we should be good. A little bit of shake. Little turbulence right here. Jumping up and down. Huh. Yeah, that wind's just kind of variable right here. That dark cloud right there, I guess. Sucking some air into it. It makes sense the airflow is going right into it. That smoothed out. Yeah, when we were going through that and it was jumping around, you can see the heading on the on the wind jumping around, so World Travel 3870 contact Houston approach on 134.453. 134.453. Right. Coming up through 9,000 feet. Into the soup we go. Creeper 0 Tango November contact Houston Center on 120.4. All right, so contact Houston Center. Point two zero point four, Piper zero Tango November. Houston yeah, Center, Houston Center. Piper, Center. Piper, November three five zero Tango November is at nine thousand six hundred, climbing one one thousand. Piper November three five zero Tango November, Houston Center, Roger altimeter three zero zero two. I've really been working a lot on radio traffic and everything with Vox ATC but I don't like the way it sounds it sounds so much like a robot I just don't like the sound of it if, if I could get it sounding more like a human being um, you know which these guys sound really good if I could get it to sound this smooth I would probably start using it but uh, I just don't like the way it sounds too mechanical all right, going through 10,000, we'll go ahead and turn the landing lights off. Turn the anti-collision lights off as well. Piper, zero tango to November. Climb and maintain one three thousand. Yeah, I'll turn them back on. It's not as cloudy as I thought it was. Climb and maintain one three thousand. Piper, zero tango to November. All right, so we can dial that on up. So increase our altitude to one three thousand. Yeah, when I set the flight plan up, I looked at the weather, looked at the cloud bases and everything, and everything looked like uh, we were going to have to. So here's the one thing I don't like about this, is once I get to my altitude and it locks in, I can't get control of it to do anything off of the G6000. I've actually got to come back here to the back and hit my vertical speed indicator here, dial it up, and then I can come back up here and I can make adjustments up here as needed. Don't like that. I wish I could just control everything right off of, off of the G6000 or G600.
but just a little bit more and we'll be up on elevation or altitude uh, sometimes my lingo is not that good um, but yeah we'll be at altitude and we'll set up for cruise and we'll go from there So depending on how this video turns out, when it's all recorded, said and done, depending on what happens during the flight, if I run into weather or any kind of issue like that, I'll um, I'll edit it accordingly. If it becomes a really, really long flight, uh, then I'll break it into a couple of, of, of uh, sessions. Uh, but if I can get it in one long, like hour long flight, I'll get it into one flight. But when I tend to go over the aircraft and showcase the aircraft a little bit, sometimes they go a little bit longer than I want them to be, so I'll break them up into two. I'd like to keep most of my flights, though, at an hour long and just keep them as one video. But again, it all depends on what happens with that, uh, with that particular. I do like the fact that when you want to get the heading bug to your course heading, you can just click that one time and it'll snap it right to it. That's kind of nice. I like to keep my heading bug matched up with what I've got going on. Alright, so we're leveling out at 13,000. Right. So I'm going to leave the throttle running up at about 40 inches until I get about you know, 150, 160. Get a good cruising speed going. Contact Houston Center again. Alright, now I can start backing it down. And I'll bring it down to about 3,400 right now, or 34 inches on the throttle. And then on my pitch, I'm going to bring my pitch down to about 20. 2200. That'll get rid of the noise a little bit. Now we'll start to slow down, but I'm also going to come down here and close my cow flaps. Here we go. That'll reduce resistance and that will allow us to cruise at about 150. So, uh, with that, and I can actually watch my speed. Is it still climbing a little bit? I could probably even get this down to about 32. Watch my airspeed. If I can stay up around 150 at uh, 32 inches on the manifold pressure, I'm pretty happy. The big thing is, is I want to get my fuel flow down to where it's around uh, 15 uh, or 18 to 15 gallons per hour, which is about where we're at right now. So I'm pretty happy with that. So if we come over here and you look at the fuel flow over on, well, that's fuel pressure there, fuel flow over here. You can see we're pretty close to about 18 gallons per uh, hour, and that's about where I want to be. So that's good stuff there. So the last thing we do is switch over. Now I'm going to show you an interesting little thing that I've run into with this plane. We're full on fuel. We've probably used enough to use about nine gallons, right? If I come down here to the center console and change over to my outside tanks, I got a sneaky suspicion I'm not going to have any fuel in them. And that's right. I don't know what's going on with this particular plane or what's going on with this model, but y'all saw when we loaded up, I loaded up a full tank on the inner bladder and about a quarter of a tank on the outer bladder. I had nine gallons of fuel in there. I now have 1.5, 1.6 gallons of fuel in the outer bladder. I don't know what goes on, what's going on with the modeling on it. It's like it's burning that fuel off um, regardless of what you've got the fuel selector on. So um, it, it just almost doesn't even, now it's down to 1.5, it doesn't even, uh, matter what fuel selector I'm on it's just burning all that fuel out of the outside first and then coming to the inside tank so if I go ahead and flip this one over now you'll see this one should be right along the same lines 
it should be at 1.5 gallons as well. So it's at 1.4, and this one's at 1.4. Y'all don't see that because the pop-ups don't show up on your screen, but they do show up on mine. So they're both at 1.4. It doesn't matter what's, what selection I have this in. They're using the exact same fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and set them back to the inside tanks and let them burn. And it'll just use the same amount of fuel regardless. A um, little bummed about that, that it doesn't work properly, but it works. So it gives you the fuel. I guess that's what matters, right? So the, the G600, a little, little finicky on how it adjusts the heading. And then the um, the fuel bladders don't really the, the switch on them don't really work. The shutoff switch works great. I will say this: uh, when I first got this plane and I wanted to shot jump in, if you set it to cold and dark, which you have uh, the ability to set it to cold and dark right here through, I think you said I think it's Shift F7 turns this particular menu on. Let me get rid of that. Shift and and seven turns on your your menu here and you can set the plane up by clicking this button for whichever you want to want if you want it ready for taxi where everything's on you just go ahead and click this button if you want it cold and dark you click it here if you click it to cold and dark it will have the fuel selector selected for the inside tanks but if you go to try to start the engines with that there uh, without moving these it will not let any fuel flow through and you won't get any you won't get the engine started you actually have to go in here and move back to center you move it to shut off then move it back over or the uh, or it won't start it's just kind of kind of an odd little thing there it looks like 13,000 feet was a good call though it gets us up on top of all of the uh, the clouds Jump outside, give you guys a look. Houston Center, orbit four three four eight. With you, yeah, well, you should have a nice clean zero. flight get out of here. And there we are. Zero. It's gonna be a nice flight. And I'll continue on with it. Like I said, if we run into a little bit of weather or something, I'll record all that and edit it in. Otherwise, I'll just kind of some brief updates and I'll see you guys when we get ready to descend for landing. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I hope you consider giving it a like, maybe even sharing it with your friends. It does help me out a tremendous amount and is greatly appreciated. Also, leave some comments down below. That's really the only way I can gauge if you guys are enjoying what's being put out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want daily notifications. I try to do a new video each and every day. Also, if you want to stay in touch with me and find out what's going on, our social links are down in the bottom left-hand corner. Twitter is where I usually announce schedule changes, live streams, and new video releases. Facebook's a great way to get in touch with me if you have any questions to ask. And, of course, I am trying to get to 1,000 followers on Google+, Plus, which I know I'll probably be old and gray before that happens. But if you can jump over there and follow me, it would be super awesome. So if you like today's video, there's a whole lot more content on the channel. I hope you'll browse through it, find something to keep yourself entertained until the next video or live stream. Speaking of live streams, I try to do them nightly around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, thanks again for watching. See you soon.